Hi, Josh Garrett from jgarrett.info here. Uh, today, I'm going to do a demonstration um, creating a multi-tap delay effect uh, in Ableton Live uh, using just components that are part of Live, um, so they're not part of the uh, group that gets added on uh, with Suite. They're just in the basic product, uh, and they don't require any third-party plugins. Uh, so a multi-tap delay, if you're familiar with uh, basic channel or deep chord or uh, chain reaction, um, that kind of dub techno, a multi-tap delay is a ubiquitous part of uh, the sound of uh, those productions. And uh, what it does is it can take a very sort of static and repetitive sound uh, and add dynamics and, and real rhythmic elements to it and some nuance. So I've got my live set here. And I've got one channel that I'm calling multi-tap delay, and I have no effects in it currently. Uh, all I have in the moment is an audio loop of just a synth stab. Okay, so that repeats every, uh, every four beats, and it's just a single uh, synth stab. And then uh, I've got a 909 channel that uh, is just a 909 loop, just to give some context to uh, the sounds. Okay. Uh, the other things I've got is I've got uh, two standard returns uh, along with it. And uh, what I'm going to do is start building my effect on return A. So there's a couple different ways uh, to build an effects rack. Uh, one is just to drag an audio effect rack uh, uh, device into the track that you want to use it in. Uh, what this does is it creates an empty container uh, where you can start to build uh, your effect out. In this case, there's, uh, there's also another way, and I'm, I'm going to use that other way, uh, which is to start with the effects that you want to use uh, and then group them. So that's usually how I work. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to bring in my simple delay, and this is going to be my first building block toward getting my multi-tap delay happening. Okay. So on multi-tap delay on this channel, I'm just going to turn it on, and I'm going to turn on my sends. So you can hear that the simple delay is in now. It's a simple stereo delay, so what it's doing right now is on the left channel, it's uh, uh, the frequency of the echo is every four sixteenth notes and every six sixteenth notes on the right. I'm going to turn my wetness all the way up to 100. So now that means that the effect is 100% of the audio coming from track A and I'm going to link these. So now it's effectively a mono delay. The left controls now control both uh, left and right channels. You can also turn off sync and just use a uh, um, millisecond frequency uh, for your delay, but I'm going to keep this synced uh, to keep sort of the rhythmic uh, component of it tied to the beat. Okay, and I'm going to turn the feedback up so we can hear it a bit more. And because it's at 4 16th notes, it's recurring on the beat. So just to change that up a little bit, I'm going to change that to 3. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an auto filter in front of the simple delay. So right now it's um, a low pass filter. So it cuts off frequencies above uh, the frequency of the filter. I'm going to change that to a band pass. And what that does is it only allows frequencies within the band that you've selected uh, to go onto the effect. So you can hear that that changes the nature of the, uh, the delay a bit. Okay, so we're still not in multi-tap uh, area. So I'm going to select both of these, the uh, auto filter and the simple delay, and I'm going to group them. I can either do that by uh, selecting Command-G or Control-G on Windows, or just right-clicking and selecting Group. So what that's done is it's added them to an audio effects rack. So you can see the audio effect rack is now encapsulating this, and this has become a chain within the effect rack. To view the chains, you select the second button down on the audio effect rack here, and there's my first chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this chain, so I can right-click and say Duplicate, or use Command-D. And I now have two instances of the chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the filter on the second one a bit. And maybe I'll set it to 4. So now you can hear I have two separate uh, 
uh, delays happening in here um, with different frequencies and uh, different uh, delay times. I'm going to duplicate them one more time to get four chains. Okay, so on this first one, I'm going to set that to two. And then on the fourth one, I'll set it to six and change the frequency. So you can hear I've got a bit of a, a rhythm happening here now with this. So if I uh, want to hear what's going on, I'll just turn on the 909 so we can hear it in context with the beat. Okay, so that's cool, kind of groovy. Um, the other thing that's uh, kind of cool to do is to play around with the uh, panning. So each chain has its own pan control. So now we have some movement within the stereo field in the effect. Okay, so one more thing that I'm going to do is uh, within the audio effect itself, I want to be able to tweak the frequencies and the uh, feedback and um, also the delay time uh, for each chain. So I'm just going to do some MIDI learn here. I collapsed it there for a second. So, Okay, so I'm just going to go back to my audio effect rack. And I'm going to start from chain one. And I'm going to use MIDI learn uh, to map controls from or knobs from my controller. Um, so in this case, I'll map frequency one for chain one. I'll select another knob for the frequency of chain two. Select chain three. And again, set another knob for chain three. Select chain four and the knob for the frequency of chain four. Uh, then I'll do the same thing coming back to chain one. And I'm going to affect the delay time. Chain two, delay time. Chain three, delay time and another knob. Chain four, select the delay time and do MIDI learn to uh, add a knob there. And then I'd want to do the same thing for feedback. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set one knob uh, for channels one and, or uh, for chains one and two. So select the first chain and the second chain, set feedback to be the same. So up under the MIDI, you can see that 81 controls both of those chains. And then I'm going to set another knob uh, for chains three and four and keep those paired. Okay, so I can turn my MIDI off. Uh, my video signs and uh, I'm now going to turn my synth stab back on okay let's select chain one so now you can see And just by, you know, tweaking some knobs, I can really play with the sound that I'm getting. And of course, I throw the beat under it. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice there is that um, I'm still getting the dry synth stab along with the effect. Now, maybe I want to control how much of the dry synth stab I'm using, uh, and maybe I want more of the effect in. Uh, right now, because I'm using a send, um, I could go in here and with my I.O. settings, send this to sends only, but that cuts off all of the dry 
Um, and again, each of my chains over here is set to 100%, so I'd have to control each chain. So again, I, I could affect um, that by setting a knob um, to um, each uh, wet dry or all, all of the wet dries to a single knob. But there's another way that I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it using um, uh, another chain, um, which will be dry, that I can uh, go between the wet and dry um, of the rack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and instead of being a send effect, I'm going to turn off my send A. I'm going to use that as an insert effect, and I'm now going to drag it into my multi-tap delay channel. And so if I turn that on, I'm only hearing the effect now because each of these chains has a wet dry of uh, 100%. So they're 100% wet. The effect is 100% of the signal that I'm getting. So I can change that by grouping this audio effect rack. So again, I'm just going to select the audio effect rack. And I can either hit Command G, Control G, or right click and say Group. And that puts the audio effect rack within another audio effect rack. So I've got nested uh, effects racks now. So if I turn on uh, the chains here, you can see here that this chain is this audio effect rack. So I'm going to just go and rename this one to uh, multi-tap, multi-tap, oh wow, okay, <laughs> delay, there we go. And I'm going to rename this chain so that I can keep track of it to multi-tap delay. And I'm going to add a new chain that's just dry. So right click, create chain, and I'm going to rename this dry. Okay. So now I get basically what I had before. I've got no effects in dry, and I have my multi-tap delay under multi-tap delay. But I want to be able to crossfade between them and uh, adjust the uh, dry-wet balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the chains. So I select chain, and it shows my chain select. Right now, both chains are on zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take multi-tap delay and I'm going to pull it over to 127. And then I'm going to pull that back out to 8. And then I'm going to do the inverse on dry. Um, I'm just going to pull it back over to uh, 120. So now these are within these ranges. And I'm going to select a new knob uh, under MIDI Learn and apply that to my chain select uh, here above the uh, chain select regions. Okay, so you can see that when I move that knob, now the chain selector is moving uh, over ch the chain select regions. Okay, so what happens when it gets into the regions is it'll be full on. So let me just turn it on. So right now it's dry. Both effects are in as long as I'm in the region where they're both present. And now it's 100% wet over here. But what I want is actually a, um, a gradual fade in. So above the region selects here, or the, uh, the fade, uh, excuse me, the select regions, there is a uh, fade uh, region here. So in this little line, you can see as I move it, uh, there's a light blue and a dark blue, and that, represent a fade, that represents a fade region. So I'm just going to put both of them at about 100% around uh, 50, or, well, 64, that's 50% of the uh, 128. Okay, so now if I move it, I'll start from dry. So the effect starts to fade in, and the effect's getting louder. Okay, now the effect is all the way in, and the dry is beginning to fade out. And again, everything in this chain is going through this effect. Everything through this chain is going through the dry, no effects. So thanks for uh, joining me for this demo. I hope you got some uh, useful information out of it. And... Um, Look for some more of my tutorials in the future. Thanks.